This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasts with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studio in uh, rainy Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA. I'm talking about the weather on a podcast. I'm a horrible host. Damn it. Uh, But anyways, other than that, we got a far more professional team with us today on the podcasters. Uh, First of all, with us, I want to switch it up. It's Dutters. I have paint on my face. I don't think I get to be called professional. <laughs> Katie Dudas, she is the sales and marketing director uh, of sales director, and marketing. Director of sales and marketing <laughs> at the Scare House, where, where you've had Blood Day already, right? Well, well, we had day one of Blood Day. Day one of Blood Day. Yeah, How many days day. of Blood Day are there? Several, because the problem with Blood Day is you only can do a certain amount at a time because you can't go through those sections once there's blood Mm -hmm. because it gets flipping everywhere. We're talking about the scare house. Yes. It gets everywhere. Blood everywhere. Fresh blood everywhere. And then you have to let it dry. And plus it's been so humid. It's been taking longer to dry than Mm. normally. I have the same problem with my laundry. Yeah. So blood and laundry both hard to dry when it's humid. Yes. (laughs) So there's multiple days. There's there's your awesome tip of the week already, right? Yes. And also with us, he is the uh, gadget guru at Big Bank International Esquire. And back from vacation. And back from vacation. Back from tech vacation. Back from the beach. Back from... I I tried to send you lots of gifts. You did? Pokemon from the beach. Oh, yes. Did you get my nerd wall and the turtle? I did. I did. Awesome. Good to have you back. I was trying to send out as many Pokemon gifts from from the beach as I could. Oh, gifts. 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 Yes. Gifts. Not not the animated. Not not, gifs. Not not gifs. Gifts. Gifts. Gotcha. G-I-F-T-S. Ah, that makes a little bit more sense. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh, but uh, thank you so much, and I can't wait to hear. Uh, you got to have some awesome things from the trip, right? Well, I had to get a new backpack. Oh. So that'll be my awesome thing of the week, oh, thanks no. to the Sassoon just pretty oh, much no. unraveled on the inside. No. Mine it on the inside. Whoa. You're probably getting more use out of it than I am, though, in general. But anyways... We'll get to that uh, less awesome thing. Uh, but in the meantime, please go check out everything at awesomecast.com uh, where you can uh, get geeky and uh, talk with us. Uh, find the, Subscribe and rate us on your favorite podcast app and watch video versions. All linked from there on Facebook and YouTube. And uh, drop us a line awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. Tweet us at awesomecast. Awesome cast on the Facebook and the Awesome Cast Facebook group. Where a lot of stories, some of the stories that we'll be talking about today are from there. And you guys get a chance to uh, uh, share with us some stories that we can uh, include on the show. And we have some conversation about things that, you know, I think that have been interesting, us, interesting to us uh, the rest of the week as well. Also, thanks to our streaming partners at Rivers Edge. RiversEdgePGH.com streams us every Saturday at 9 a.m. And we join them once a month uh, for the awesome thing of the month. And, of course, our other friends over at the405media.com, where we're replayed every weekday at 9 a.m. Pacific Time, noon Eastern Time as well. Thanks, Thank you to our streaming partners helping to get the awesome out there in front of more ear holes. Also, if you want to be part of the studio audience uh, or if you want to get in front of our audience uh, with some advertising opportunities, we'll work with you there. Hit us up at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com and have a chat with producer Missy over there. Hi, Missy! Producer Missy is here, being awesome as usual. And also, thank you to our Patreon supporters, patreon.com slash awesomecast. Our friends at the Coffee Club $5 level, you're going to hear about National Record Mart on your gold this week. <laughs> uh, Matt Weller and John Diggy DeGore, uh, I believe both been on this show before. And uh, at the fan of the show, $1 level, Michael Fedor, Mike Fedor Show on the Twitter, and Guys, we got a new Patreon supporter. Um, mm. And I did message to see if we can get a pronunciation. Um, uh, so thank you, our new supporter, Open. Open? It's OPN. I don't know. OPN. 
it's like not enough for me to make a decision on. Uh, Open Chang, thank you so much. Um, I, I, well, I don't know. Is like as you know, we we say the names at the, uh, on the show, and as you know, I usually screw up people's names on the show. So we just want to make sure we're good with that. Thank you so much for supporting the show and let me screw up your name. Uh, you can uh, uh, let me um, mispronounce your name at Patreon.com/slash awesomecast as well uh thank you so much for the support it's literally helping us keep the lights on here in the studio so let's get into our awesome thing of the week and let's start with chilla let's hear about vacation <laughs> and bag gate bag gate so as you know um i got the sassoon i think that's how you pronounce it i'm not pronouncing things we might have got the wrong one to be clear we did not get the awesome bag brian is still rocking that thing i i think i i just think there's only one and i i he think got, it's just whatever comes off the line that day <laughs> they tag their name on it and hope for the best which the soon do you get today yes so i got the bag and within about two to three weeks the the big pocket has like that center does yours have the center divider because mine has a center divider yeah i got it was like two pockets and like a tablet center, slot kind yeah, of thing yeah yeah so the fabric started to tear along the top which there's pretty much just like a flimsy piece of like spongy foam in there it not not like good foam i'm talking like the paper thin foam you would get in like packaging Mm -hmm. um and then it started to tear down the side so the inside just became this huge pocket you're taking this to work every day, of course, right? Every day to work. And then I usually carry at least two two laptops, a tablet, and a number of other tech. Um, <clears throat> so while I was on vacation, it just so happened that Maryland has tax-free week last mm-hmm. week. All their, unlike Pennsylvania, their clothes and certain things have tax on them. Um, but... The one of the surf shops had a um, deal. It was tax free week, so their backpacks were tax free. Um, I got an extra twenty five percent off for back to school week, and then they threw in some free stickers. And I love a that you got a you got a backpack in. You got. I love that you're 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 taking advantage of back to school yes discounts. Um, so I got. I don't even know how to pronounce this company. All the trendy kids wear it. Is it? The RVCA? I would just call it RVCA at this okay. point, yeah. Um, so I got one of theirs, and it's meant for, like, skateboarders, mm. but it works perfectly. It has a very nice top, um, and it's too heavy to lift. Yeah, it's, 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 it's got this, like, like if you have one of those, like, kind of soft coolers where it zips around the, the, the sides yeah. more than just over top like it usually but, is. But what I like is Or, like, my hamper. There's a... And you're not gonna be able to see it. There's a small pouch at the top. Like if you zoom in on the very top of that, mm-hmm. there's a there's a small a small pouch on the top. Mm-hmm. You unzip it. It opens up. It has um, elastic all down the back with different pockets. Oh. Has elastic down the back with all different pockets. Um, there is actually a side zipper in the back for a laptop, which mm-hmm. fits about two. One thick laptop and one thinner laptop. I can't get both of my laptops in there, but um, so one you know the problem most of us has to get both yeah. our laptops yeah. in there. Yeah, I, I <laughs> I, it's funny because I have so I and we'll cover this next week. I have the Surface Pro, the MacBook Pro, my work laptop, which is a Lenovo X1 Carbon, and the iPad. I have so a getting solution. them all into a bag is. I have a problem. solution for you. What's your What's your solution? Two backpacks. Jetpack. Two back. Well, yes, one could be a jetpack. Two backpacks. You wear one one on the back, one on the front. There you go. That's how you well, get the. I'm work actually everything. wearing a small shoulder sling, because I am worried about the, um, the uh, Surface Pro and the iPad mm-hmm. being crammed in there with a bunch of other tech. So I have been carrying many, a secondary bag. How many screens are you typically carrying to work every day? Screens? I'm going to say mm-hmm. screens. Oh, geez. I'm so going to use the TSA designation. How many Does screens? Does a Kindle count as a screen? Yes. So I got the iPad, the Surface Pro, the MacBook Pro, Kindle. We're up to four. 
You got four fingers up. The Note 8, the <laughs> iPhone. <laughs> Does the Apple Watch count as a screen? Uh, you, uh, just, yes. <laughs> So, okay, seven screens. So th- and this is why we call him the gadget guru here on the show. because this, And then this is your job. Again, yeah. this, this is your job. Your job is to Look work with these work with these platforms in various ways. Yes. So, yeah. And it's funny because, it, it, <clears throat> and I, I will admit, I don't use them all every day. Mm-hmm. But it's, ama- it's amazing how many times I get like a random question. And I even have like, so I have Windows 10 running on the Surface Pro. I have Windows 7 running on the MacBook and a VM. Like I'll get just random questions like, hey, where's this menu option or where's that? And just having the ability to open that up, figure out where it's at, help someone out mm-hmm. is, is a big deal. It's like your utility belt yes. on your back. Uh, well, Katie, I, I, I want to also recommend my dual pack pack idea to you, too, because you're usually packed pretty tight over there, too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, it's funny how they're like, after a certain age, you shouldn't be carrying backpacks. But I was like, there's no way. I'm you, when, it when you come in with your backpack, it reminds me of like going like when I went to the Art Institute and you packed all those textbooks in the back. <laughs> yeah. And I, I know you, it's notebooks. Yeah, it's the notebooks. Like you're and still very paper and, based. Oh, I need paper. I have a paper planner. I am very much. I'm very analog. <laughs> we were just talking about that today. Um, Nino, uh, our operations manager, about how I need a keyboard. Like I could not go straight like screen typing mm-hmm. ever in my mm-hmm. life ever. I don't think anybody reasonably can if they're like for real taking like I've I'm now I've done meetings where I'm mm-hmm. just like taking notes on my phone, mm-hmm. but. Not ones that I intend to do a lot of heavy lifting, just like I should probably note this, I should probably note this, or something like that, or I should throw this in my reminders, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, generally, yeah, you kind of need a keyboard. Well, Are you even... showing your age when you say that? What that you need a keyboard? That you need a keyboard? I could you imagine doing like it would drive me nuts, but I don't know slide, if that's a thing. like I don't know. Do you create slide decks at all? Mm-mm. Like I can't imagine doing a slide deck without a keyboard. Some people do it. Oh, and I think I don't even like using a mouse. Like I move a lot of times. I get the graphic close to where I want it, and then yeah. I'm key. I'm arrow key. And that's around. the thing. This this can very well be like you know there is we're gonna be close to the 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 era of people that may have never really touched a keyboard, mm-hmm. right? Like a physical keyboard. Well, it was funny because Christopher's going pre K. And we went and looked at one of the the pre-K schools for him. And they're like, one of the things we teach is how to use a mouse. Jeez. (laughs) Like, that's part of the pre-K curriculum. Pre-K. Because when they get, there were too many kids coming into kindergarten Uh that did not know how to use a mouse. And I know Christopher would be one of them. That is crazy. Like, he tries to touch our TV all the time. We didn't. Still. I didn't see a computer with a mouse in a school environment until the 10th grade. We had Apple IIEs hmm. for, like, <clears throat> the entirety of When, yeah, life. I would say I'm probably with you there. I didn't see a mouse till. And now he's making up for lost nine, time yeah. by stuffing seven devices in the back of it. Yes. But, I mean, everything's touch screen now mm-hmm. for him and and uh, he's primary his primary compute device is the ipad um mouses but, are so 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 bad that's so old it's so, so old. old school okay. but I, I guess there there's some people i think though I, I mean i don't know if you're doing graphics work i don't know would you rather have for for photoshop type work if you didn't have a touch screen with a pencil mm-hmm I'm guessing the mouse is the primary. Would it be something? Would it be something if we do the full 360 on things where you leave the keyboard and we go back to actually writing? What? In a digital. <laughs> <laughs> but no, 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 no. I mean, but in a digital environment. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like with a pencil and, and things well, like Wacom that. Well, Wacom tablets. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and, I mean, and Wacom's kind of the high end uh, side of that, right? Mm-hmm. For, for mm-hmm. people that do, do art. But what if it's, you know, it's, uh, you know, the iPad has kind of uh, made that an affordable thing, you know, an usable thing more so. And it's getting there, right? We, we have our first, second generation pencil stuff happening. My mother, by the way, is in the chat room and she needs a keyboard. So that's good to know. Uh, but, she, ha- she has to use a mouse for work. Well, yeah, but you're a drafter. I don't think, th- I, I don't think drafting is a part 
like AutoCAD people are are going to be running that on an iPad in the next five years. Mm-hmm. Don't worry, mom. You'll be retired by then. You don't have to worry about it. <laughs> um, but uh, Amanda's saying that mouse and trackpad combo for Photoshop. Yeah. And I find myself, I do find myself Dude, track, but I can't. going to trackpad more than I would uh, think that I've I been considering getting an iMac to replace my MacBook mm-hmm. um, for in studio. And I, I'm like, I got to have a trackpad. I don't know when I sit down at, when I sat down before the other computer died, their Mac mini, like I was down at final Cut, but like, I don't know how to do some of this, you know, because I, I know the gesture, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the mouse motion, <laughs> where it is in the menu even. And it's just like, Oh yeah, I know I do put two fingers here and do this. I can't even tell you because it's so mechanical at this point. You know, it's, it's that iPad gesture thing. You know, I still pick up Missy's phone and I don't know how to use it yet. Cause it's a 10. Do you think you'll get to the point where it'll be all voice command? Oh yeah. I mean, that's like, the ne- that's the next step, right? Select cut. I mean, Hey Siri, cut this. Oh, sorry, everybody. Sorry. Um, out there. <laughs> Ruined. Hey, so-and-so do this. Hey, trim this. I don't know. I could see it. I could see that being really the next step. Yeah, absolutely. Katie, speaking of <laughs> generationally back to and back to school, <laughs> back to it school. seems like we're all doing back to school these days. Yeah. Uh, Katie, what's your awesome thing? About? Uh, Tinder U. Uh, Tinder, um, the online dating app, uh, is launching Tinder U, and specifically for college students. Uh, if you have a .edu email address and you register your school. Wait, this sounds familiar. This sounds <laughs> like how Facebook Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Deja mm-hmm. vu all over the place here. And as long as you're on campus, because it will be looking at where you are located, um, you can go on Tinder U, which is just for college students. It's, this is, I thought, okay, so it's pretty much just like Tinder, 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 Tinder. The feature arrives at a time when Facebook is poised to enter the dating market. Did you know that Facebook was entering the dating market? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, did, been, that's did, been a new story for the past that. month, I think, right? Yeah. So now it's like a thing thing. But Facebook is not doing a separate app. It's just all built into Facebook because that's what Facebook does. And it's really funny. So you can do your Tinder thing. But only, it's on iOS, and only a four-year accredited not-for-profit school. What? Because oh, I know some of us went to poor for-profit universities. Oh, some of us did, and there might not be around much longer. longer. But I don't know what that. that I still have to pay them money. But anyways, yeah. So uh, like, no online universities or virtual schools will be supported. Mm-hmm. Darn. So, so no they're Phoenix. they're they're not just only saying you have to have a .edu, but you have to have specific .edu. Mm-hmm. So so, what is this? Is this just kind of so we don't get a fl- the flood? I mean, because if you're if you're on Tinder, I think is this ideally like you're finding people on your campus? Yeah, it looks like it, right? But you can look at. I mean, you can go beyond. Like if you're visiting or you're somewhere else, you can go pretty much wherever. But it's still, yeah, it looks like maybe just keeping it within your particular. Or university. or I suppose, or if you're in a place like Pittsburgh and you're at like Duquesne and you find somebody at Pitt or CMU mm-hmm. or something, right? Yeah. Um. So is it, it feels like it's just a, we're rolling this out slowly. That's our first distinction, right? Yeah, I think so. I think they'll probably expand it out. And, but for right now, that's where they're at. Until the creepy faculty gets on there. Yeah, no kidding. With their ADU (laughs) addresses. Oof. (laughs) Oof. Creepy, beware. That's inevitable. Wait for that story to come out, right? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So Tinder you, most of us will not be able to participate in that. Um, and it's not age based. What if you're going back to school? Mm-mm. Yeah, you can be any age. <laughs> there you go. Any age. Is there an age limit on the Tinder U? You would think they would be trying to hit like a certain. Didn't look like it, but demographic. I could be totally also, wrong. does that make me own make sense? Does that technically make it safer? Does it? I don't think so. Mm-hmm. Like, well, you're not. You're not like a, high, a college student tindering wherever and and like anybody can it's, it's i don't know i don't know if that like 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 kind of it's a false sense of security because how much I, I would, would i would question yeah. i mean whether or not it's safer but i mean it would make you feel like it was safer i would question even i'm guessing there are certain colleges out there that allow you to keep your email address for a very prolonged period of time oh, yeah, if I not think, forever i had mine accessible i think people still i think i know people still have their aip yeah so one. yeah I'm guessing this is I would not count I would not count this as being a safer way to tinder. Mm-hmm. 
Not that I. No, her, no, no, no. Wait. We're all Tinder. I think we're all Tinders. <laughs> you know, because are you a Tinderer? Or Tinder. How, what is the? What's the term? One who Tinders. Tinderite. Tinder. Tinderite. <laughs> Tinderite. <laughs> Hmm. Sounds like a strange what do coppery you metal mind. The only here? the only reference I know is is the wrestler we know, Darren De Niro, that used to be come out. He used to, one of his monikers was the Tinder Terrorist. I think he had a T-shirt in that mm-hmm. vein as well. So anyway, so my awesome thing. Hey, this is a little bit of a crossover with our other show, but they were they were um, and we've seen videos of this before, and in the in the feed we're going to see some a bits from WrestleMania. But WWE presented their kickoff show this past weekend for SummerSlam, one of their, their second biggest event behind WrestleMania, um, and they streamed it live in VR. So we broke out the gear VR. Actually, I, I, I well, I, I charged it up because I didn't realize it was completely dead. Um, because that battery on that old 6S is not doing too well. Mm-hmm. Um, also overheating. Holy crap! Uh, but uh, so, so we got it going enough. We, you, that, then I got it on. I, I loaded it up, and we were passing around. We we're having a SummerSlam uh, watch party, and some of us were already here hanging out. And uh, it was kind of cool. A couple of things impressed me. First of all. Um, not getting into the function, like the, the view of it. It was the stream wise. We had the stream on for WWE Network uh, on a Chromecast here in the studio. And then he, this was streaming through the Gear VR and the next VR platform, nextvr.com, if you want to check them out. And um, the stream was pretty dead on because we weren't wearing headphones at the time. Um, and so that, that was kind of cool that they like, somebody would react to something happening and we don't know their perspective until they told us that guy's butt is my, in my face. <laughs> um, but like we could see the match in, in the actions that were happening and then them reacting. Cause that, obviously they got an up close and personal kind of view of it. Um, typically the cameras seem to be like one in front of the ring, one on each of the towards the camera posts. And then, you know, then there's like kind of a floating one for when they do entrances and things like that. Um, uh, Chad, uh, Chad the Shad over on uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show said that he was watching on his uh, PlayStation 4 VR and uh, it, they were doing these stand up, um, just, you know, two guys talking about the show for the night up on the stage. And he said he was basically watching the camera tech the entire time. <laughs> This is not full 360 <clears throat> video. Your view is you can turn around in 360, but these are pretty much 180 cameras for the most part. Okay. Um, because really that's all you need because all you're getting is the crowd on the other end. Um, so you, you have that kind of perspective to it. Um, it. It's been pretty interesting. They've been doing this, like I said, since I think I think their February pay-per-view fast lane was the first time they've done it. And they've been mostly taking them. You can go on the next VR app on the iPhone's weird. It didn't have the update um for the new stuff but if you're on the gear vr and presumably the other platforms that had like the streaming for SummerSlam, but you can go by, back to wrestlemania and some of the other shows they'll do like a 10 minute clip recap of some of the highest points um voiced over by by Corey graves that we were actually talking about in gold uh, uh previously um it's i don't know if it's necessarily the way you want to watch wrestling like an entire four-hour pay-per-view necessarily but it's kind of an interesting experience and again this we talked about next vr before they're also i think they're, they've done live nba games as well can you pick you were saying how they were on the different posts and whatnot can you pick your angle or did it force you no this is it being moved you but this is being the... live switched based on the action going okay. just like just like a multi-cam setup that pro wrestling would be like what we're okay. doing on this show right mm-hmm. uh if you're watching the video version of it so it's pretty cool and again uh, supposedly it was supposed to work on google cardboard but again i i pulled up the next vr app on my iphone and all i could see was a wrestlemania like and it didn't look like it'd been updated for a while but then later i looked and there was like this new uh japanese mma like kickboxing thing or something um that was up there so I don't know what that's about, but it seemed to be working on every other platform. Okay. So go check it out, nextvr.com. Um, and again, if you have an Android or iPhone, you should be able to watch some of this even just in kind of floating, like, you know, 180 cam kind of thing. Or if you have a cardboard or somebody actually uh, messaged me and asked um, um, if you bought one of those cheap VR helmet things from Walmart. Remember, we were talking about like the $5 ones that mm-hmm. they were selling. That's basically you know, uh, a Google cardboard. So this should work with something like that. And that is fine for something like this because you're really just watching video at that point. You don't need something with the interaction. Um, so it works out really well. So, all right. And with that, I want to give a shout out. We were, spe- we were talking about the blood earlier. <laughs> 
<laughs> but I want to give a shout out. Uh, you know, we, we may not be pros when it comes to scaring people, but uh, we know someone who is. The Scare Owls even has a podcast to talk, at all, talk about all sorts of things in the business of haunted attractions. Uh, they're gearing up for this year's season um, where, you know, you'll learn about blooding and everything like that. I believe your your um, your, your Scare House Weekly was was about the blood, yep. the blooding up, blood, right? Blood, blood, blood. Blood, 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 blood. Um, but no, go check that out over on scarehouse.com and check out the podcast at scarehousepodcast.com <laughs> and also gearing up for this year's season. Um, are you past hiring event at this point? Yep. So Making um, the decisions. Making the decisions. They'll call you very creepily. What, do you do like creepy call ups at that point? Well, Welcome to the scare house. Scare house. Uh, creepy you email. Have been selected. You have been selected by my creepy email. Welcome to hell. <laughs> Um, you should just like say read in scary voice. Read in scary voice. <laughs> Begin reading in scary voice. We have a very special set of instructions, instructions for you. Mm. Um, I don't know what that was. Uh, but no, go check them out. It, it, <laughs> Katie, Katie and Scott and the crew over there have a lot of fun over there uh, between the podcast and the um, the uh, Scarehouse Weekly. That's every uh, Friday on Facebook Live. So thank you, um, friends of the show, the Scarehouse and dude and Dutters. Dooters. Dooters. <laughs> ah. All right. In the local spotlight, um, we had a lot of people. We had a couple um, items in here from people that we, we we talk about here and there on the show. And uh, I just wanted to kind of give a quick shout to that. Uh, first of all, I, I'm not familiar with, uh, I'm not really familiar with um, Uptown in general, um, but Tustin Park, according to Next Pittsburgh, is getting a high tech makeover, it seems. Um, according to this, you know, it's, you know, one or there, it's, it's pretty much a playground park area up there. And, um, it, it, it was part, it was announced to be getting a, a $25,000 redesign, uh, in addition to the new playground facilities for children to enjoy, uh, according to next Pittsburgh, um, the park will also receive, uh, or will also include a series of Wi-Fi hotspots and solar powered charging stations. Um, as part of that, it's going to be, um, it's known as Project Connect. A new design for the park was created by uh, engineering collective Hack PGH and the uh, nonprofit Meta Mesh Wireless Communities. Uh, we've talked with uh, Meta Mesh, of course, on, here on the show, and uh, we actually have a Meta Mesh here in the. And these guys are awesome. They've like provided internet to like outdoor concerts and things like that. And I know they've been uh, part of some of the uh, city initiatives lately that have been rolling out. So they've been getting around. So a really cool thing to see that um, uh, some new news. For our friends at MetaMesh, uh, so uh, go check that out, and and hopefully we'll get to enjoy that park and, and see see the kind of stuff they're doing there. We don't have. Um, what are you, is there still free Wi-Fi downtown? I remember there used to be. I will let you know tomorrow. I never, <laughs> I never look any like my like, LTE re- so fast, and yeah. so prevalent. Yeah, I, I don't have a large need for it. Right, exactly. Um, I mean, but some people do, right? Yeah. I mean, not not all, not everybody has the I'm going to pay for unlimited uh, internet because I, I'm in the business of needing it, right? Right. Yeah, and it, for me, it's more I just wait. I don't even I don't even have unlimited. It's kind of like I'll just wait till I get home to download that update. I check for updates before I leave. Like I can get I can mail trickles in. For the the, right. the diehard te- I, like right. I live on text most versus of the day. me whose whose uh, IT uh, internet connection for a uh, Facebook Live did not work out for permissions, and I had to stream an entire hour thing for a client from my phone uh, that mm-hmm. thankfully had full bars. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so th- there's that. But again, that's that's very atypical. There's a reason we we do what we do with the internet here. So also uh, shout out our friends at uh, Innovation Works. Um, we've had. Um, a lot of representatives from either there or from their um, um, classes of, of Alpha Lab and Alpha Lab gear on this show and other podcasts here on the network. Uh, they celebrated 20 years and uh, $78 million invested in Pittsburgh companies. Um, this has been, this is one of, when I started this show, like this is one of the first kind of looks, like first kind of inspirations of, hey, there's something happening here. And it's cool to see these guys have been growing over the last 20 years of doing this. So what was that? Like 1998, they started up. And that's, if my math is correct, what year is it? Um, so no, it's cool to see that as well. Um, congratulations to uh, Innovation Works out there. Keep doing some awesome stuff. Here's a less than awesome thing. I know this goes with Chilla as we were talking about your, your GameStop 
<laughs> subscription. <laughs> but a lot of a couple of friends of ours in the gaming uh, bit, I know, I think it was Chad the Shad and Riz were talking about this over there. Uh, so just an advisement, if you are uh, on Amazon Prime's video game pre-order program where uh, I guess they've been giving discounts if you pre-order through them, um, that is going to be going away. And instead, on some titles, you will be receiving a um, up to ten dollars store credit instead. Uh, and I don't know that it is not something that I've used, but I know they're pretty upset with it. They they really like that discount and everything like that. Um, and and there's supposed to be a lot of other um, changes as well as we're kind of seeing that. And tw- and I think there was something about maybe Twitch maybe uh, rolling back on their ads ad free for Prime situation too, which kind of stinks. Although I, I'm somebody that kind of rolled into Twitch Prime through my Amazon Prime account. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens with that. I was really worried when I first saw, saw this article that they were going to take away two-day shipping. <laughs> so I don't know. The way I read it at first, uh, okay. I, I was, was like, like, what? It's one of those things I read at like 2 in the morning and just didn't process in my head, right? Well, so if you're getting a $10 credit, though, is it that big of a deal? Because you can just take that $10 and apply it to the credit right, to the on next the next th- game. Yeah. And then that game's going to get you ten dollars credit, so you apply that to the next then, game. It'll be interesting to see what this does um, in in function uh, as well. Mm-hmm. So, uh, speaking of Amazon, they are in talks to reportedly acquire a movie theater chain. This is the landmark uh, Mark Cuban uh, partially owned one, and uh, apparently this is the same one that Netflix was supposedly going to buy. And this is, I believe, Brandon uh, gave us this this one. Um, oh, a credit to uh, yeah, credit to Riz on the uh, the, the Twitch Prime uh, change as well. Uh, but uh, this is again a part of them trying to expand in, have a foothold into you know the movie market. They've been making movies, they've been doing theatrical releases and everything, right? So, it, it, and there's been a lot of discussion about the Paramount decree about how movie theaters and movie companies are not allowed to own each other, mm-hmm. kind of thing that happened in like the '40s. But I don't know. It's it'll be interesting to listen. It was fun to see Amazon Prime all over the Whole Foods. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just like wrapping my head around what happens with a the movie theater, right? Is there um? Oh, what if they have dash buttons to get you more popcorn? What? That'd be awesome. Delivered right to your seat. Delivered right to your seat. Oh yeah. Would you see? There's there was some university that's putting in like umpteen thousand. Yeah, echo dots all in their university? The university really yeah in all the student spaces but the dash button would be, that's an awesome idea like i want more twizzlers bam jeez um oh there's the uh, thanks alex cars is in the chat room and he dro- just dropped us something about um pokemon backward backwards and compatibility i'm i don't know if i can process that right now um something about transferring uh, uh pokemons from the old games to the new one or vice versa, or something like that. So, um, also from the, this is one that Missy shared, and I thought this was like a CG practical joke. This is from the site um, Good Times, GTGoodTimes.com, I guess. And uh, so, this is, and I, I, I'm, I realize I haven't seen too many selfie sticks lately. I don't mm-hmm. know, if, I don't chill if you saw a lot of selfie sticks on your vacation. There were not that many selfie sticks. It seems sticks. like it's going away. People are like, hey, my arm works fine. Um, <laughs> right? Uh, you know, I, I don't know. Is it, is it a skill or by happenstance? Like, whenever I take a selfie, like, I don't feel like you can see that I'm holding it with my hand. Like, you're not. Well, our arms like, are so Unless long. you're doing, is it, is, it, is it a tall people thing? I don't think it's a tall. I think it's. People are getting better at taking the picture. Okay. Okay. Then so this is this the selfie taking has become kind well, of even a skill. The, like even where, even with a selfie stick, you can't get a huge group of people. Mm-hmm. So I don't see a lot of the, the selfie stick or even the normal selfie. I see the okay. I'm taking okay. a picture downwards, and there's a bunch of people behind me, mm-hmm. like friends and whatnot. So it's kind of like a you're getting the top half of my head. <laughs> Or like the, the the upper three quarters of my head in a corner. And I, it's more, I want you to know I'm here and look at all the people behind me or look at all the people I'm with. That's what I'm seeing a lot more of. Okay. Which doesn't work with the selfie stick either because you can't get it far enough away. Well, Chilla, what if your selfie 
was a drone that floated your... I saw this and I want one. Katie, did you see this? Yes, I thought that was awesome. It's it, it, it so <laughs> so if you're not in the video here, it, it's basically um, it's it's a phone case of a sort, and it has little propeller, two little propellers on it, and it's gonna float there, and you put it on the timer, and you just well, there's gone with a wind ad for some reason. Let me see. It. So supposedly this has this this video shows it in in function. It. Uh, and it supposedly flow starts. This does not look real to me. Mm-mm. It doesn't. It, a, it doesn't look real. B, like how much battery power does this require? Like those little pro- propellers are going to float my phone. Like and here's what. Here's what. I, it doesn't seem. Here's what seems more likely to me than those little propellers not floating my phone mm-hmm. is the phone just takes <laughs> off 150 feet into the air. And then, oh, out of battery. Hey, why is my phone just <laughs> elevating into the stratosphere at, at this point? Like, I don't, and I don't. Is, uh, does Apple Care cover uh, that? <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, what happened to your phone? I attached it to a drone to take a selfie, and then it just took off. When You know how drones sound. It sounds like 52 weed whackers running all simultaneously. I can't imagine taking, like, a video selfie with this. Because all you're going to hear is, <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I, the, the concept is super cool. Mm-hmm. I'm just, I just question. Like I said, I, I don't question that they can get the propellers to lift it up. It's for how long, and how do they keep it not from taking off? Yeah, is this like a program thing where you just go? and it just goes out like a certain number of feet and up a certain well, it looked like the, the way it looked like it was somehow he kind of put his hand up in the air and the device came up to a speed where it he could just take his hand away uh-huh. and then it was levitating yeah but could you imagine if you had put coordinates in here and then like someone just hacked it and your phone just like zigzagging what? around <laughs> what happens on a windy day I want it to be a thing Right. Well, the, but well everybody the drones... was like, "They'll let it go into like hurricanes and tornadoes." Go. <laughs> that could be talk, fun. Talk about a, a Facebook Live. <laughs> <laughs> totally in. Um, <clears throat> no, I don't. I don't know. Uh, the concept, like I said, the concept is super cool. In. <laughs> in theory. Any angle, anywhere. I'm trying to see if there's like a bio link on this. Was this a Kickstarter or something? That I don't I know. There's not really any kind of forward links to a product or anything like that. But uh, we'll see. We'll see if we hear more of this. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. What else we got here? Um, no, I'm not. So Laura was in here earlier. And I'm not clicking this link because it's it's a website that will tell you if Thanos killed you. I was spared. You were spared. Okay. Katie, have you th- clicked on this yet? I didn't care. I'm sorry. I... <laughs> Will not I will not click on it because it's it's, it's Schrodinger's uh, uh, in, in Infinity Gauntlet. I am neither spared or 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 dead if I don't click on it, and I'm okay with not knowing. So it's like Katie and me have the same stance but different. Different. <laughs> <laughs> so we were uh, just talking about um the whole I don't oh shoot. Well, people pretty much know what it's going on in the movie at the end now. Yeah, if yeah, you don't know like, the meme by now. Yeah, exactly. it's it's funny because we have a casting crew page for Scarehouse, and we do this thing we call it a purge, where we purge the folks that are no longer the current casting crew members. Mm-hmm. And Nino wanted to post the the gif of like doo, 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 before we deleted everybody, so we kind of gave him a hint that they were all just being like the ones that didn't come back. Does it somehow figure out that you went there before? Like, if you keep hitting refresh, is it going to give you a different I'm answer? I'm alive again. I'm dead. I'm alive. <laughs> oh, yeah. But Every so Macy saying so Laura was saying refresh, and it, it stays on whatever I gave you for whatever like reason. A, yeah, it's like a cookie there to say that, hey, it this person cookie. came here. Yeah, and... yeah, yeah, probably. And this was your thing. It won't refresh. I, we were wondering if, you know, we're multiple computers on the same network. What's, you know, would it, would it do, do the same just because... Like, so, I mean, I guess we could just hit the HTML and find out uh, how that works. But or, or I've already she's already tested it. <laughs> yeah, see, see, my result would be tainted at this point. I have to go on my phone or something. But that's not the point. Bo diggity. Hmm? AJ, 
AJ Koptik, who used to lead. It's been a while since he's been on this show. Um, Target, he says, this is a tweet. We got a video. Um, Target now sells, or I'm sorry, an image for the video. Uh, he sells, they sell an Oregon Trail game that looks like an Apple SC30. It is $25. The computers we run, we, we, we had to run this game on uh, cost thousands in the 90s. The future is wild. Yeah, it's a little, it, what, it's a little like, handheld game. It looks like there's arrows, like there's a joystick. And I want to also point out, this is a color version of Oregon Trail. I was going to say, I, I don't remember seeing Oregon Trail back then. I want color. this. I want this. And I had Oregon Trail on my phone. Oh, I need to look that up on my old iPhone. Because uh, I, I do remember buying Oregon Trail on there. Um, that's but awesome. it was the new Oregon Trail, right? Yeah, it was a newer version. It was like, it had, had better comic-y graphics. Kind of comic-y looking. Comic-y looking one. It was a lot of fun. Um, but, uh, no, that's awesome. I need to get to Target now, um, and, and check this out. Uh, so I, mean, I imagine you can find that out of the electronics section. Uh, again, uh, a lot of these stories that we've been talking about for the last, like, 20 minutes, guys. Holy crap, this show's running long. Um, <laughs> uh, you, you guys can join us over on the Facebook page for the awesome cast. But I also want to give a shout out to our friends at Slice on Broadway supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza as they do. There's been a lot of this coming through the studio this past weekend between wrestling shows and and my brother came in and we, we grabbed something uh, uh, to munch while he was in for his birthday after we went to the zoo yesterday. I had a fun day at the zoo, guys. I had a lot of fun at the zoo. Um, anyways, thank you so much to them right up the street uh, from our, our studio right here in Beachview on Broadway, hence the name Slice on Broadway. I've uh, been supporting us for a good long time. It's been cool to see them grow, of course, here, as well as Carnegie PA, PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. And over on the East End, uh, thanks to our friend from Wrestling Mayhem Show, we got a picture uh, <laughs> pointing at the sign, a little bit of a wrestling reference to the Slice on Broadway sign over there at PNC Park. Uh, thanks, Billy, for that. I know he listens to this show every once in a while, too. Uh, check him out, Sli- PJH underscore Slice on the Twitter. Let him know the awesome cast sent you. All right, guys, a couple more stories before we get out of here. Katie, what is going on with Facebook right now? Um, You may have noticed this. If you've been done Facebook ads lately, you can target specific interests. I mean, when you get down to like Facebook ads, you can kind of target a lot of different things. But they're deleting 5,000 ad targeting options to prevent um, discriminatory ads. and Which has been in a discussion for yeah. a while. There was, a, there was some housing stuff. That was a question for a while. Um, and I guess this is just following through on more of that yeah which i so a couple of times i've done ads and it's popped up that certain groups that i've targeted including people that like to go out like it's very like when i do a lot of my targeting for different uh places it's it's you know like going out uh specific like food interests maybe or drinks or you know what i mean like trying to figure out like that group and I, I can't, there was a couple of groups that was like were getting tagged as like these will be going away the end of august and it was like i don't think i don't know like i haven't quite figured out what the rhyme or reason is for some of these but yeah so you'll be seeing that a lot more often and then i know as far as like we were posting jobs um on facebook in an ad that um they they were i was getting a notification that i had to sign or essentially agree that this was not discriminatory and I, I looked and tried to figure out any way it would have been. So I think it just pops up for all of them because there was nothing that I put in there besides looking specifically for customer service skills. I even changed the age from 18 to, you know, 65 plus. It didn't matter, you know, just trying to not get kicked out. It went through. So I must be asking everybody this at this point. Well, that's where I'm like, I wish you could opt, disable this, but allow people to opt in or something. Because what I don't want is a bunch of junk ads. Mm-hmm. Like I want the tailor tailored per specific ads for me. That's why we're and there. If now I start yeah. getting a bunch of random stuff that I would never care about. Mm-hmm. It, it's going to be annoying. Like, it's kind of like, I don't mind seeing like the random tech ad mm-hmm. for something I'm probably never going to use, but at least it's something mm-hmm. that kind of, I have downloaded several really bad Japanese games just based on it being connected with professional wrestling um, really oddly, thanks to Facebook. But you... Like, they, like it knows me, mm-hmm. and, and and I downloaded it. I haven't played it much since, but it, it worked, right? Right. But uh, I don't know. Like, I, I, I see where they're going, and I understand why they're doing this. I think there should be a way to opt in. Mm-hmm. Like, wipe the slate clean, but if I... If I want to get ads because I like Mexican food, 
It doesn't, you know what I mean? Like it shouldn't matter my affinity towards a certain ethnicity. Like, I, I don't know. It, it, and Katie, we've, we, this discussion has been having, of course, a lot on our Slack. It, it seems like there's a lot of reactionary things happening yes. on this side of Facebook, on both the consumer and on the, Ad and a uh, user, uh, what do we call business user? I guess yeah. side of business things. manager. I don't. It's so it's just chaos. Yeah. A lot of the stuff, and it's just like, oh, we're just going to do this now. And it's, but they've it's, always been this way, and yeah. now they're being pushed by pressure, outside pressure, on top of their usual. Hey, we're going to go this way with things, right? Mm-hmm. Like it seemed like out of nowhere. Like, hey, we're going to give you like a few weeks notice to let you know the entire Facebook page is going to change. Like. I don't think there was a whole lot of notice. And I mean, you're on all the lists and Missy's on all the lists for, for the Facebook business stuff. And this still seemed to just pop up out of nowhere. And I don't even understand what the changes are or Mm -hmm. like, what am I, am I, am I going to be doing anything different? I don't know. Do you feel like you're getting less out of your advertising though? Because you're not going to be able to hit. Well, we don't do a lot of advertising on Facebook. We do, we do a lot of organic on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Um, Katie, Katie can speak a little more to the actual advertising side, I guess. Uh, we've moved some of our ad, um, a lot of ad money away from Facebook. Okay. Because it's mm-hmm. it's even when you're paying for ads, it's the it's, targeting. It just doesn't seem like it's. You definitely don't get the bang for your buck you used to mm-hmm. with it. And but it was always it was always said that that the Facebook ads were really cheap for what you get. Mm-hmm. Like it had not really leveled out. Maybe this is just them leveling out to where advertising should be for a platform like mm-hmm. that. But but there's always going to be somebody like the next platform. Maybe maybe some scarehouse ads on Musically. By the way, uh, the one ad that I saw that that got me to click, and now I get all the stupid ads for like music crap. I finally saw the full like image of it on like Instagram <laughs> with the same ad, which I probably get now because I clicked on it by, you know, like tricked me into clicking on a messenger. Now I get it all across all the platforms. I'm not gonna download your karaoke app. Thank you very much. Um, but you can actually look. I'm looking in Ads Manager now. And if you have some of those groups that are going away, it'll say we're removing some detailed targeting options, we're removing some interest behaviors, demographics, and all partner categories from our platform. For more review t- details, review the flagged items in your ad sets. So then you can look at the ad set, and maybe it'll. So it me. is guiding you. It yeah. is guiding you a little bit. But either way, they did not include these on the cool flashcards you had last week. No, but I'm trying to see, it looks like you might oh, rules new. Applying no, it doesn't look like that. You really get into, and I mean, like I'm, I'm kind of digging into the ad to see if it says, but it doesn't say, um, which you know what I mean, like what it is right away. Mm-hmm. I think it looks like I have to dig into this a little bit, but it does. It will tell you which ones are. New. Well, keep us updated on that, and I'll, I'll be keeping an eye out on the uh, the Slack side of things. Um, so Chilla. A vertical. Well, okay. Wait, this looks weird. So a vertical and, mouse. So this is not the first time I've seen it. I've seen this. I've I've seen a lot of requests at work come in for these devices, and there weren't many people that made it made these types of devices in the past. Um, Logitech has announced their vertical mouse. So what it is is imagine if you were kind of holding a joystick but kind of opened up your fingers not your thumb it kind of you kind of keep your hand in that kind of uh, take your hand vertical it, it kind of kind of hold your hand straight out in front of you like you're gonna like shake you're, a hand yeah like you're gonna shake somebody's hand now imagine that that where how you're holding your hand is how you hold your mouse so it comes up at an angle so you kind of wrap your hand around it but then you still move it like a mouse, like a mouse on a on a on a surface, but the buttons are vertical instead mm-hmm. of horizontal. This is good for ergonomics. This is good for ergonomics. Yeah. I, I I've I've heard a lot of people that actually have like carpal tunnel and and mm-hmm. stress problems with their hands. I know, but my mother in the chat room has has had that a bit. Uh, really you know, requesting a... these types of devices. Mm-hmm. They used to be obscenely expensive. Um, they're on pre order at Logitech for a hundred bucks. I thought it was a pretty pretty interesting concept. And I wonder, you know, we were talking about how we're going, we're seeing ourselves transform to trackpad and touchscreen and other things. I wonder if this is another evolution where most of, in a, in a not too distant future, will this be all of what mice are left 
is this, <laughs> is this what's going to be out there from a just from a pure ergonomic perspective of uh, vertical mice and men um when you're using touchpad is it like typically more ergonomic because you're not putting your wrist down on something i don't think so no like uh, but it probably has more chance you still of being don't have up. yeah no rest or something. You still don't have a rest, and like I'm still kind of. So you need something around the axle, like my sweet uh, here in the studio, this sweet Radio Shack gel Ooh. gel padded uh, mouse pad. But you would never like I. I'm trying to. I would never want that wrist rest under my wrist while I was trying to use a trackpad. Right. Right. I don't know. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how those develop uh, as well. So um, I wanted to touch on one more here before we head out. Ooh, I got a thingy, though. Oh, I, yeah. I found, you have I found a Facebook. You I, found? Fa- I found one of the offending categories. Okay. Outdoor enthusiasts. What? Yes, outdoor enthusiasts. It's an offending? It's offending category. And they think Try it's Try like- using these alternatives to help reach vel- relevant audiences. Outdoor recreation. Outdoor enthusiast. Or outdoors. So I don't know if it's just because it's marked as a behavior versus an interest. But yeah. So really, this is just a realignment. Yeah. Of categories, it sounds like. Outdoor enthusiast. Well, now you got to, now instead of going after one thing, you got to go after four. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You got to buy more ads. Sneaky bastards. Hmm. Interesting. Um... All right, I want to I want to hit this one up. Um, BMW has a flying motorcycle concept, which I mean I feel like, and this is according to Maxim because it's where you get your tech news is from Maxim magazine. <laughs> I didn't know they were still around. By the way, I mean you know, Playboy pretty much became Maxim, so you know this was this is a over a year old. Is it over a year old? Says February, How did this just come up? February 17th, 2017. How did this just get into my... Okay, well, that means we should have them by now, damn it. That's what I was going to say. BMW has a flying motorcycle concept that is apparently... <laughs> uh, which looks like a really cool land speeder. Actually, it looks like the motorcycle from like that poured over young Captain Kirk in the Star Trek reboot. Jeez. Um, um, but no, this is the concept. Uh, they, they, they... Wait a minute. Did you ever see the island? No, I've never seen the island. Isn't that with um, Ewan McGregor and um, Scarlett Johansson? It reminds me of the police motorcycles from that. Okay. No, no, I haven't seen that. I'm probably thinking a completely different movie. Oh, go, if like, you get a chance I'm thinking to see the, the island. beach. I'm no, thinking not the beach. The beach. No, if you get a chance to see the island, definitely watch the island so apparently this is um uh (laughs) never mind this is bmw and lego working together on a design for a bike so to provide a dose of what if yes exactly (laughs) so thank you maxim for that um and it's still popping up in my facebook feed for some reason unreal newspapers online amaze me um statecollege.com there's an article i want to read they're like Answer a quick question to access the article. And the article is, in the past year, have you purchased lingerie, bras, or underwear? (laughs) That seems personal. (laughs) What is this? For the longest time, I was like the third hit on Google Images for bras bras tech. Bras bras tech man. If you typed in... If you typed in in (laughs) bras tech male... I was like the third Google image that showed up because we did just the picture of you. Yeah, it was because we did that interview with um, was it the trust the CMU girls that designed the tech bra. Yeah, that was an Alpha Lab company. Yeah, right? an Alpha Lab because of because of that, I was like the third Google the image. Were you, you even on that show? Three words. Yeah. Oh, that's back when we didn't separate the interviews. Yes. Oh well, you're welcome. <laughs> I, I lost the standing though. It's too oh, long. well, we'll have to call them back and see how they're doing. Well, guys, in the meantime, uh, please go check out our friend also supporting the show, Alex Cars, our friend on the West Coast over there, alexandercars.com, alexcars.media, putting together the puzzle of design and media from branding to print and digital projects. Alex can do logos, merchandise, websites, and even photo and video projects. Check them out alexandycars.com or alexcars.media to get started. That's K-A-H-R-S. 
alexandercars.com. Uh, he's done a lot of t-shirt and video, uh, uh, DVD covers, website work with us um, here as well. And uh, so you can tell, even if you're Pittsburgh-based or wherever else uh, here in the flyover states, uh, you can work with uh, um, Alex over there in California. Really good. He's been in the chat room uh, all night as well and contributes uh, some stories here to the show. So thank you so much for supporting the show, Alexander Cars Media. All right. Uh, so coming up, there's – nope, there's nothing coming up. Uh, <laughs> the PodCon, <laughs> Pittsburgh PodCon is coming up um, on September 30th. Um, we are going to be a part of that at uh, Sorgatron Media and such um and uh, also cast representing at that table too uh and we're gonna have uh i believe live live record we're gonna there's gonna be a panel that's gonna be part of international podcast days live streams um and we're gonna be at a new brewery down in the old uh spaghetti warehouse location in the strip and there's gonna be recordings of um the wrestling mayhem show as well as get jag off and i think a few other shows to be announced and uh jay cooper comedian jay cooper is joining us on wrestling mayhem show i think it lives on he's a beachview native as well um is going to be emceeing the event for the night for the night uh so help come celebrate podcasting with us look for uh, some information we've been sharing the event over on sorgatron media uh as well and also if anybody is in the area we're doing a jumanji game night um next week uh, again, uh, the event I believe next Wednesday night, and this this week we uh, here at the studio, and this week we're also going to be on Twitch with a Super Smash Brothers Brohemoth Invitational. We're going to have wrestlers play Super Smash Brothers on Twitch, yes. uh, which is going to be a lot of fun. So looking forward to that. Katie Dudas, you'll be live this Friday at noon. Yay, you got it. Scarehouse Weekly. Yep. Anything else? Going on in your scare house world? Mm-hmm, just getting ready. <laughs> no, not things that you can tell us yet. Not yet. Soon. So many things. <laughs> I've seen scare houses been popping up in some of the publications around town. I think I think next next Pittsburgh had an article, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. So uh, look out for that. I'm excited for zombies. Uh, the full on zombie experience to be yep. Noms, returning lots to of the noms. scare house. Lots of noms <laughs> and zombies and zo- zombie related activities. John uh, K Dutter is on the Twitter as well. Yes. John Chichilla at Chilla on the Twitter. John Chichilla on the Facebooks. I guess we're probably, what, three weeks from an Apple announcement? Yeah, I heard them talk about it on Twitter a little bit about, like, what are we going to get, iPads and whatnot. So Yeah, I think we need to do some kind of live. I'm in a weird spot since I got the phone, like, really kind of mid-cycle. Like, it's a, and I'm not really sad about it. Oh, just wait. Okay, in you'll a few weeks, sad. I'll be very, very sad. I'm you'll trying be, to you'll be up at midnight waiting for the... The online orders. Oh, go. that never happens. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm going to have to pay off the rest of this phone. That oh. I remember. Remember, I got the big phone, and I spec'd it out. Are you? But you're not. Are you on like the every two? Mm, I think I'm on the every two. I think I went 24 months. Okay. On mine. Plus, I also have a watch. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm 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 good on tech for a while, Chilla. I'm gonna ride this out for a good long time, probably. So um and of course at sorgatron on the twitter and sorgatronmedia.com to check out all the podcasts as well and uh thank you to producer missy keeping things in line all night long and uh, we'll get our mic back there sooner or later thank you everybody that's been joining us in the chat room i think my mom is still there hi mom uh <laughs> as well as uh steve from the bold sports podcast go check them out dan greenwald is hanging out in there from the comic book pit as well and uh, alex cars amanda from bold pittsburgh and uh, everybody else has popped in here throughout the night thank you so much for being part of the awesome cast experience sure and thank you everybody uh, supporting us on patreon thank you you've been our awesome our awesome audience have an awesome week This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.